afternoon, everybody. Everybody could please take your seats. We're going to call the meeting to order. Thank you, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Transportation Committee meeting of Wednesday, November 13th. I'm Councilman Mike Bonham, the chair, along with my colleague Paul Koretz. Uh, anticipate being joined by Ms. Martinez shortly, but uh, we are uh, going to begin. Um, we have a few speakers who have filled out multiple public comment cards, so we are going to uh, do that first and general public comment, then we will uh, do the consent agenda and then get to item 15 before we do other items after that. Uh, so, um, uh, Mr. Herman? Not in the room. He's not in the room. Mr. Previn? Not in the room as Okay. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ramirez? Is there a Brenda Martinez? Any, anywhere? Yeah. Uh, Ms. Martinez, you, you filled out a card for um, uh, item 15 and also general public comment, right? Yes. Yeah, so you, could do, you, can do your, you can do your general public comment now. You can sit down. Okay. Oh. Just do the one minute now. Uh, just because I might not be able to stay all the way till the end. Okay. I want to make a comment on item 15 already. Okay, go ahead. Um, so, good afternoon, uh, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Brenda Martinez, and I am a board member of the Boyle Heights Neighborhood Council. I'm also the member of the Transportation and Environmental Committee, and um, I'm a resident of Boyle Heights. I am here to oppose any digital advertisement devices on vehicles, uh, to oppose this new proposed pilot program for digital signage on ta taxi cabs. Why? Well, I ask, um, we should spend taxpayers' money supporting programs that will place your constituents in danger. These signs are hazard, intrusive, intrusive, but overall dangerous, dangerously destructive. According to some of our own government statistics, like the CDC, the NHTSA, um, also by other organizations like National Highway, um, National Safety Council, and the AAA, the number one cause of deaths are hundreds and thousands of injuries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, um, okay colleagues, uh, I'm going to close general public comment now, uh, and then also we'll close the multiple speaker item section, um, and would recommend we approve. Uh, on consent items two through nine, eleven and twelve. Any objections? No. All right, so it'll be the direction of the committee to approve items uh, two through nine, eleven and twelve. Uh, and then uh, what we'll do for the remainder of the agenda is we're going to do the general manager's report, then we'll do item 15, and then we will do uh, 12 through 14 in that order. So uh, uh, 10 through 14 in that order. So this is item number one. Good afternoon, Transportation Committee members. It's my pleasure and privilege to recognize some outstanding performers from LADOT. Um, when I call your name, please stand up. First, I would like to recognize Lamise Chang. Lamise works in the Active Transportation Division and joined us only a year and a half ago. She came over from the City Planning Department, thank you uh, Vince Bertoni, to join LADOT as a Transportation Planning Associate. It is not often that employees get recognized so soon after joining, but we want to recognize her skill in improving processes, coordination with the team and others, and her can-do attitude. Lamise is the lead for many Active Transportation Bikeways programs efforts, including project development and planning to expand the Bikeways network infrastructure. She's managing the post-installation 
requests and communication efforts for the MyFig project, conducting outreach efforts for the Main and Spring Forward project, and plays a vital role in coordinating efforts with the Bicycle Advisory Committee. We are also excited that she has a big role in planning and developing new projects to connect the LA Riverway with the communities that it serves by facilitating safe access for those who walk and bike to the river in conjunction with the Mayor's LA River Task Force. We know Lamise will continue to do great things and serve as a role model for new employees. Thank you, Lamise. Next up, Claire Everly. Claire is also a transportation planning associate with the Active Transportation Division that's been with the department for about a year and a half. LADOT was fortunate to hire Claire, who came to us with several years of experience as a council deputy for District 14. By extending herself selflessly and tirelessly to get the job done, she has quickly grown into a leadership role in many of DOT's programs. Amongst other tasks, Claire is the project manager for the Ciclovia Open Street Program and oversees the department's bike parking programs, including the installation of over 300 bike racks a year. Perhaps the most significant reason we're bringing her work to your attention is that because of her selfless dedication and ability to work with partners at all levels, levels. She played a huge role in earning the city a large share of the state's cap and trade revenue through last year's Affordable Housing and Sustainable Communities Grant Program. In partnership with the Housing and Community Investment Department, the city won a total of $84.9 million out of $402 million statewide for five affordable housing and sustainable transportation projects in Los Angeles. Of the $84.9 million awarded, $27 million will go to first last mile transportation infrastructure projects. Claire applied herself day and evenings, mastered a most complex set of grant criteria quickly, and worked smartly and efficiently to meet an aggressive state deadline. While we appreciate Claire's unassuming and quiet stance in the way she works, we think she deserves a loud shout out for her accomplishments. Thank you, Claire. <laughs> last but not least, Lauren Ballard. Lauren is a transportation planning associate and is the heart and soul of the Vision Zero division at LADOT. We are all so lucky that Lauren joined the Department of Transportation full-time last year, and she has since spearheaded some of the department's most critical, critical tasks, such as the Vision Zero Progress Report, updates to the Vision Zero Action Plan, development of a new Safe Routes for Seniors program, and onboarding the department's first Creative Catalyst program. Recently, Lauren led the launch of LADOT's new Livable Streets website, the new home to many of LADOT's safety and public space programs. This could not have been possible without her heart and tenacity to create a website that our partners and constituents can really be proud of. Lauren also shepherds the strategic direction of Vision Zero's data-driven prioritization methodology and is not afraid to stand up to any engineer when she believes that we can develop a project in a more impactful, thoughtful, and dignified way. Lauren aims to make the roadway experience better for everyone that walks, bikes, and takes transit throughout the City of Angels. Lauren is also the lead for our successful Rainbow Halo and Bike Memorial sign programs which honor and lift up the memories of those who have lost their lives in traffic crashes while walking and biking. We are lucky to have her. Thank you, Lauren. And that concludes my report. Uh, okay. Uh, all three, can you just stand up again? All three. I just want to thank you again. I, I, I love that Salida uh, does this monthly and, and brings people in. Uh, to give them the recognition they deserve. Uh, our city, all of our city employees work really hard and do phenomenal work. Uh, I have a particular appreciation for the work that you do uh, in making our streets more safe and more livable uh, and trying to do engagement and project delivery and consensus building all at once. And you, you probably don't get thanked enough for it. And so I just want to make sure, in addition to the recognition, you get a big thank you. So thank you. Anybody have questions for the general manager? Okay, so that Thank will dispense with item number one. Thank you. And we will, uh, uh, recognizing that there's a lot of people here in the audience for item number 15, we will go next to item number 15. Item number 15 is a Martinez O'Farrell motion instructing DOT to inspect a taxi cab equipped with a digital rooftop smart screen for compliance with the requirements of section 25400 of the California Vehicle Code and to report its findings and requesting the Board of Taxi Cab Commissioners to create a program to allow rooftop digital advertising displays on a reasonable number of licensed taxi cabs. Okay, we have a, uh, do we have a staff on, on this? 
public yeah, I'll do the public comment first. Thank you. Uh, so, um, for public comment, uh, Leon Slomovic, Gary Vogan, Scott Smith, uh, Theodore Boutros Jr. are the first four. Uh, just to make sure, this is part of public comment or on uh, issue of item number 15? This is item number 15. Okay. Um, I wanted to thank uh, members of the committee for bringing this. What's your name, sir? My name is Leon Slumber. Okay, thank you. Uh, I want to thank uh, members of the committee for uh, initiating this uh, legislation, uh, Ms. Martinez and uh, um, Councilman Corris. Um, this is necessary for the drivers at the time they are struggling. Um, this is additional income that they can get. It doesn't involve taxpayer money, and the numbers of taxis uh, that would be installed on is minimal. Also, um, this is already implemented in a number of cities like New York, Chicago, Dallas, and San Francisco. Um, this is sorely needed for the industry that's struggling today, and drivers will certainly uh, appreciate an opportunity to get that extra income. Thank you, sir. Please go ahead. Whoever's next. Go ahead. Yes, my name is Gary Vogan. I am the secretary of the Los Angeles Taxi Workers Association. And uh, on the issue of item number 15 of allowing rooftop advertising on taxi cabs, you know, on the surface of it, this is, for drivers, a hard proposition to resist, $300 a month in an industry where drivers are struggling to survive right now. But from my conversations with many drivers, and by the way, I've been a driver for 31 years, since 1988, so we have some experience with rooftop advertising. And in the past, drivers have not seen much of that money from rooftop advertising. There were many problems, <coughs> particularly lease drivers, such as myself, who do not own the cabs. There are safety concerns that we have about these, you know, items being placed on top of our roofs. And we're, I have concerns about drivers getting paid, actually getting paid. So Thank you, sir. I just have, I have questions about that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Let's go ahead, sir. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair and committee members. I'm Scott Smith with Best Best and Krieger. I work in the firm's Irvine office. We were retained by a stakeholder here to review the city's legal authority to allow the pilot program that's, that's before you in this motion. Uh, we concluded after looking at that that there are no obstacles, certainly no preemptive state obstacles, uh, to the council's discretion to do this. Uh, our initial conclusion was then supported by a written opinion that you have, issued by the California Legislature's Legis Legislative Council's Bureau. Uh, they also concluded that the state vehicle does not preempt the proposed advertising opportunity uh, contrary to the initial pressures of the city attorney, we think that there is good authority for you and that office to support this motion. Uh, the California Supreme Court has held that opinions by legislative counsel should be given equal weight to those given the California Attorney General's opinions. Uh, and so, therefore, uh, we think the written opinion of legislative counsel should give you security Thank that you, the sir. council has the discretion to do this. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Theodore Boutrous from the law firm of Gibson, Dunn and Crutcher, and I'm here representing Firefly. I want to mainly just underscore that LA Municipal Code section 8754 does not apply to the rooftop digital ads at issue here because they are installed only on taxis and other vehicles whose primary purpose is transporting passengers. Section 87.54 addresses the specific problem of large, unsightly nuisance billboards, usually bolted to trucks, that then are parked uh, on the street for days on end. That's why the, the code section has only ever been applied to vehicles whose primary purpose is advertising. Uh, in fact, the city attorney's office itself admitted this in a case called uh, the Lone Star Amari case, where the Ninth Circuit and the District Court uh, upheld this code provision on First Amendment grounds. Uh, and so any assertions by the city attorney that Section 87.54 applies to rooftop ads on taxis are simply wrong and contradict the office's statements to federal judges. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, next speakers are Armando Flores, Nancy Freeman, 
Sanjay Ranchad and Gregory Stock. Nancy? Dave, could you, yeah. Nancy, you can come on up. Yeah, you can come on up. Yep. Uh, Armando, why don't you go first? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Armando Flores with the Valley Industry and Commerce Association, VICA, and we're here to support the establishment of a taxi pilot program for digital rooftop advertisements. Uh, Councilwoman Martinez's proposal would allow rooftop digital advertising to be displayed on a reasonable number of licensed taxi cabs. Uh, this type of advertising offers local businesses an in innovative model of promoting their product or services to consumers throughout Los Angeles. Uh, Small-scale digital advertising allows small businesses to reach a diverse audience in neighborhoods that are typically hard to reach while remaining within their budget. Uh, we support and we urge you to support Councilwoman Martinez's motion, which will help guide the development of good policy while ensuring public safety and allowing businesses to thrive using new technology. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Go ahead, Nancy. Hi, Nancy Friedman uh, uh, from Brentwood. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we oppose this, uh, and we have for the last couple of years, and uh, there are several reasons why. Um, people complained that they parked in their neighborhoods and it was unsightly and they didn't like it, the people that owned the taxis, their neighborhoods. Um, secondly, it's like the antithesis of trying to make the streets safe. They're so distracting. And um, if one person gets killed because of this, um, it's very serious. And there's just really no advertising or anything that is so important that you can't wait to get home to see it. This just ties into digital signs of any type, and we will oppose this as long as we can because it just does not seem city-friendly to have this um, be involved. I understand there's a living to be made by people that do this, but there's also a quality of life in Los Angeles that is slipping away because we're beginning to look like a, a, a silly city rather than a really impressive place, so thank you. Good afternoon, Sanjay Ranshad with Firefly. Our company installs smart screen displays on taxis and rideshare vehicles that show community appropriate advertising. The audience for our screens are pedestrians, not other drivers. The motion uh, before you would establish a process for taxi drivers to earn additional money from digital rooftop advertising at a time when they need the financial opportunity more than ever before. Firefly can help drivers take advantage of this opportunity because we enable full-time drivers to earn reliable supplemental income as much as $300 a month without driving any additional hours. Our smart screens in the city of LA comply with the California Vehicle Code and a recent opinion from the Legislative Council's Bureau at the State Capitol confirms there's no obstacle in state law to this motion as you just heard. Our smart screen displays also are compliant with the municipal code requirements, as was explained by Mr. Boutros. And I should emphasize the screens shut off when the vehicle is parked and turned off. Thank you for your leadership, and please support the motion. Thanks, sir. My name is Gregory Stack, and I'm the Director of Partnerships and Public Affairs at Firefly. I've spent the last two years ensuring that Firefly benefits the cities we operate in by supporting drivers and providing free messaging to our nonprofit and public sector city partners. In Los Angeles, Firefly has partnered with the Los Angeles Police Foundation, the Coalition for Clean Air, and the SBCA LA, people assisting the homelessness, as well as the Amber Alert, and running effective messaging campaigns across the city at no cost to our city partners. In addition to our city partners program, Firefly is dedicating time and resources to improving the communities in which we operate. Through smart city sensors and our displays, we can monitor temperature and air quality to generate scientific data that helps you, city leaders, make better decisions about local policy issues. We look forward to exploring opportunities of partnering directly with the City of Los Angeles and expanding our City Partners Program to LA Taxis. We ask the Council to move forward with the Martinez motion to help taxi drivers earn a living. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, last two speakers I have here are Sam Jamal and uh, Kendall uh, Asuncion. Go ahead. 
thank you, Chairman Bonin, for scheduling Councilmember Martinez's motion. I'd also like to thank Councilmembers Martinez and Coretz for their leadership. My name is Sam Jamal, and I'm Regulatory Affairs Director and Council for Firefly. These are challenging times for all workers, especially taxi drivers in Los Angeles. Gas prices are at record levels, housing costs continue to increase, and all this is on top of rising costs and necessities like health care and auto insurance. This is why Firefly is proud to offer an opportunity for rideshare drivers to earn supplemental income, as much as $300 a month here in Los Angeles. That's nearly 15% of their average income. These drivers don't have to drive additional hours to earn this income. All they have to do is drive the same hours they'd otherwise be driving. We'd like to extend this opportunity to taxi drivers here in Los Angeles, just like we do for taxis in San Francisco, New York City, Chicago, and Dallas. Many of these drivers are working over 70 hours a week, and this is an opportunity to make additional income. The city's previously approved this as discussed. It's fully legal under state law and local law. So let's go ahead and work together to have this opportunity for these drivers. Thank you. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Kendall Ascension. I'm here on behalf of the Los Angeles Area Chamber of Commerce to express our support for a pilot program to allow rooftop digital advertising on tax caps. We've previously expressed our support for a program to allow taxi cab drivers to receive the same opportunity to supplement their incomes without having to work additional hours as their ride share driver counterparts. In addition to developing an equal opportunity for cab drivers, digital rooftop advertising is an innovative technology that is part of the future of communication. It allows local businesses to advertise throughout the region and generate more brand awareness. We urge you to support Councilwoman Martinez's motion and appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that concludes the uh, comment on this item. Uh, Ms. Martinez, did you want to say anything before uh, staff, or do you want to go straight no, to staff? No, I, I wanted to call up uh, DOT, if anyone from, is anyone here? I wanted to hear if there was additional recommendations that we should be considering. Yes, uh, so Salida Reynolds, General Manager, and we have a couple of um, suggested recommendations. And the main one is that we would like the opportunity to bring back a proposed pilot program to permit these devices. Um, and we think that that's an important first step before we can actually deal with some of the indemnification issues around um, requiring us to, to perform inspections. And so we think that before we begin inspecting, we want to bring back a proposal for a pilot program. And, and from my perspective, um, I think it will be valuable to have that pilot program be about all of these kinds of devices, um, no matter what kinds of vehicles they're on top of, so that we can make sure that we're preventing kind of um, business practices that might negatively impact and increase congestion in the city um, and distraction and so on and so forth. So I think there is a way forward um, to create a pilot program that can be very simple, um, and we'd like the opportunity to come back and, and present that to the committee. So the only concern that I have with that is I just want to make it very clear. My motion was to pilot taxis and taxis only. Yeah, understood. We will bring back a recommendation for you to consider and sort of understanding, you know, what that would mean, what the sort of um, direction and, and pros and cons are of, of that. Anything you want to add? That's all. Uh, Mr. Kratz? Uh, how long would that delay the process and if we didn't take that step, what would it look like if we just move forward with the program? We don't have the resources or capacity to begin inspections right now. We have, um, you know, sort of a lean program that is equipped to inspect performance inspection duties under the taxi program. And so it would take us a while if we were going to try and just move into inspections to resolve all of the indemnification and do we want to have third party inspections and how would that work? Um, and would we actually charge a fee um, to Firefly for those inspections as part of a permit program to cover the cost of administering those inspections. So I don't know that you actually save a ton of time um, getting rid of the, the pilot program. It, it really would require the department needs some time to ramp up to be able to start performing those inspections. We don't even have a good sense at this moment of, you know, how many there are in the city right now and how we would bring all of that together. So what do we do with uh, Uber and Lyft in terms of inspecting them, or who, who is expecting the fireflies on uh, Uber and Lyfts right now? Nobody, and so I think that's a policy question that we would want to present to transportation, to this committee, to give direction on as part of the pilot program. There's a disturbance in the back. I can't even hear what... Yeah, uh, there's a disturbance in the back. This is the last warning for Mr. Herman and Mr. Spindler. And Ms. Mar and, uh, no, Ms. Martinez. <laughs> that goes for both of you. <laughs> uh, for Ms. Hernandez as well. 
Um, so so uh, what I was asking is, uh, so if we don't, ha and as of yet, have not felt compelled to regulate and inspect Uber and Lyft, um, why would we feel compelled to do that for taxis? Before you answer, just let me, uh, to the folks in the, the, the back of the room back there who are uh, now putting in cards, we already had multiple cards called for uh, uh, Mr. Spindler, for Mr. Herman, uh, for Antonio Ramirez, uh, and you were not here when they were called, so we're not reopening public comment. You, you missed your opportunity. Thank you. Please go ahead. Yes. Actually, uh, may I ask you to please repeat your, your question, uh, Mr. Koretz? I think he's asking... Why do we need to inspect fireflies on top of taxi cabs at all? When we don't do it for Uber and Lyft, and if well, we, have we a weren't suggesting this. Well, we have a different regulatory responsibility for those two entities, and I think that's the real difference. We don't right. have jurisdiction over either Uber Certainly. or Lyft. That's a uh, CHP, who would, uh, either CHP or the DMV. Well, if they don't feel compelled to do this for them, why are we compelled to do it for taxis? Well, for us, it's a safety issue, uh, amongst State other things. Say your name, please. I apologize. Jarvis Murray, a poor hire policy administrator for LADOT. And for us, it's a safety issue. So one of the things that we want to ensure is that if, if there's any type of digital advertising on any vehicle that's operating on our curbs and our city streets, uh, that it's safe and that it remains uh, sturdy and uh, something that isn't going to fall. Also, we're looking at you know, what type of program is it? Is it the type of program that incentivizes a driver to continuously drive more and more in order to earn more money? Or is it something where the driver can earn passive income by doing the same amount of work? We could look to our partners in other cities, um, such as New York and Chicago, who are uh, regulating um, digital advertising on their taxi cabs and look at what they're doing. Um, I understand that New York has um, some specifications in terms of what they're looking at for what goes on top of the advertising, um, whether it's a military grade type material, um, those types of things in order the content to... Content of the advertising itself. Correct. And so these are the things we think are important uh, for the city, and we think that it's important that we still have a, a voice in those matters. And we think that permitting digital advertising on, on, on any vehicle, frankly, is an important process for what we should do. I mean, to me, it's just frustrating that we aren't able to have any impact at all uh, um, upon the group that is doing it currently, and uh, yet we, we will slow the process down for a different group that's no more or less responsible or safe within the city of Los Angeles. I think that I would just humbly suggest that that is one of the benefits to actually d regulating and permitting the companies that are providing the advertising. And so that actually uh, regulates their existence in Los Angeles, no matter whose car they're on top of. If you don't drive for anybody and you just want to have digital advertising on top of your vehicle, you know, that is an arena where that is one of the upsides of potentially regulating through that in that way instead of creating a program that is curated exclusively for taxis. Mr. Michelson, you look like you'd have something you'd like to say. Good afternoon, Council Members. David Michelson with the Office of the City Attorney. Pleasure to be here uh, with you today. I think this may be the third time our office has appeared here at the table in front of this committee uh, dealing with this issue. So I'm not going to go over all the uh, grounds that uh, we've gone over in the past, but I think it is important for our office to say the following, uh, simply because during public comment, a number of uh, members of the public came up here and would have you all believe that it is legal, legally smooth sailing um, to allow these digital messaging signs to uh, be placed on top of vehicles, taxis or otherwise, in the jurisdiction of the city of Los Angeles. That's not true. It's not legally smooth sailing. Uh, we issued, a, we issued a, a report to the council, confidential, back in June of this year that goes into a, a fair degree of detail as to the legal problems. And I've uh, testified before you um, at a high level as to what some of those concerns are. There are problems under state law as to why these devices are not consistent with state law uh, under current uh, state law. And there's a problem under the Los Angeles Municipal Code 8754 when any vehicles at the curb that has an advertising device that's attached to the vehicle, it violates the municipal code. Having said all of that, 
if the council, through its policy desires, wishes to allow for uh, this opportunity uh, for drivers of vehicles in the city to have these kinds of uh, devices mounted on their roofs, if that's the policy decision, we would, as we have in the past, recommend that state law um, amendments be sought uh, and also that the municipal code be changed as well. I'll also add that even if those two things were to happen and the legal waters were to be calmed so that this technology could be used uh, here in the city, um, allowing the uh, devices only to be put on top of taxis and on no other vehicles would also be legally of concern um, whether it's called a pilot or not, uh, in terms of just allowing one set of drivers to uh, have the opportunity to have these devices and no other set of drivers in the city uh, presents legal concerns uh, from certainly our perspective. So I'd be happy to answer any questions, but I didn't want to sort of sit there in the front row and not give you all the benefit of the well, Let me ask something. So, listen, I think th these things are ridiculous. I'm not in favor of them at all. I'm opposed to digital advertising of all sorts. So I'm a no vote. Uh, as, I, as I was opposed last time this came up. Um, but I mean, I'm hearing different things in the room. Uh, I've got, uh, it sounds like two colleagues who would like to approve a pilot for, for taxis only. It sounds like the department has an interest in doing a pilot for both taxis and, and, and TNCs. Uh, and the city attorney is saying, yo, flashing red light here, do not go forward. Um, and, and I had a question which I think Dave Mr. Michelson, I think just sort of answered, but I was going to, to ask, um, given the sentiment of, of uh, my, my, my two colleagues, uh, could we do a, a pilot just for taxis, conditioning that any company that participates has to agree not to be doing it on something that we are not permitting? I think what, well, for the city attorney, I was just going to say, we can bring you back some alternatives. Well, that can be one of them. We can have a taxi-only plan. We can explore some of those. They're not necessarily simple answers from, uh, I think there are some legal considerations that are maybe make it hard to, to give you an answer to that on the fly. But I don't see any reason why we can't bring, I'm, I hear the, hear the direction from the committee, strong interest in moving something forward with all due haste that just focuses on taxis, and we can bring you sort of some, a, a couple of choices on that, that you can have in front of you in, in a short period of time. So uh, another question for, for Mr. Michelson then. Um, you said there would be some concern on your office's part if we were to make a distinction between the, the, the taxis and the TNCs. Would there be a similar concern if we were allowing them for taxis and TNCs but not allowing uh, people who were driving for DoorDash or something to also be making extra bucks by having advertising on their rooftops? I think the answer to your question is, yeah, the legal concern is going to be out there if there's sort of any discrimination among drivers, even uh, myself. Why can't I have one of these things on my roof? If the city wants to, from a policy standpoint, through a, po uh, through a pilot process or some other process, sort of test the waters with these things to see if they're safe and maybe gather some data and do some analysis, um, I guess the city then would, if it's going to just only allow, say, taxi drivers to have these devices on the roofs, the city's going to have to have an explanation, a rationale as to what is the sort of nexus or connection between why only taxi drivers are allowed to be piloting these, these devices and no one else. Um, in other words, the city could have a pilot, assuming these other legal concerns were addressed, at state law and, and city law. The pilot could be, you know what, we don't really want more than a thousand of these devices cruising around the city of LA. We want to have all these various restrictions because I think your general manager of DOT is wise to point out that they should be regulated if they're going to be out there. But if we say we want a thousand of them out there, let's highly regulate them. Let's check back six months and then one year. Um, let's see if they're safe for pedestrians, safe for other motorists, um, see what other issues might come into play, and then report back. Fine. Why just taxis? Why not TNC drivers? Why not DoorDash? Why not Dave Michelson on top of his Ford Flex? So I think that would have to be answered. I'm not suggesting it's not, it's impossible to have that rationale as to why taxis only, just I haven't heard it. And, and the rationale probably would not work if it's just taxi drivers are suffering uh, financially. And that's, that's a worthy cause, I get it. That may not help though as to why a pilot. Does that make sense? I get it, yeah. Ms. Martinez? Yeah, so I mean, 
I am not an advocate for the advertising industry. That's not why I'm doing this. I think I've been very clear from the very beginning. The taxi industry has been disseminated uh, by the unlevel playing field that we have given the TNCs. And now I think some people are regretting uh, the proliferation of TNCs because uh, of the wage issue. And so uh, I think some people are starting to realize that this gig economy is not helping good paying jobs and the middle class opportunities. So I've been very specific, Mr. Michelson, as to why I feel we need to do something for this industry. Just look at what just happened in LAX, that fiasco. We still can't figure that piece out. So I just want to be very clear. Mm -hmm. um, I think you've come to us with, um, uh, I felt that the city attorney from the very beginning has been incredibly resistant to this idea. Um, and so if you have concerns, and DOT has concerns, then include them in the report so we can make an intelligent decision. That's all I'm asking for. I'm not suggesting that we're moving forward today, but I am suggesting that if, and this is not even a closed session item, um, if, so I don't even feel comfortable talking about the legality of this in open session. So if you want to have a legal argument, we could have had this scheduled as, as a closed session item. But if you have concerns, then go ahead and put them in the report so I can have actual information that I can base it off of. Um, but I just felt that your office has been resistant from the very beginning. I'm very clear about we, what we can and cannot do. I want to get to a place where we can do something for this specific industry. That's my motive. Well, I appreciate that, Council Member. And certainly our office calls balls and strikes legally. That's just what we do. We're not setting policy here. And you're correct. We have concerns. We have issued our concerns in writing, in detail, in a confidential report back in June of this year. It's all laid out in great detail, which I'm not going to go through now because we're not in closed session. I've only explained things sort of at a high level, and that's what we did a number of months ago, I think twice at T-Committee. So our advice is in writing, it's detailed, it lays it all out, um, and the, our advice hasn't wavered. And again, we're just calling balls and strikes, and if Council, from a policy standpoint, wants to uh, you know, promote this technology, uh, certainly we respect that. We're just trying to lay out what the, from our perspective, legally prudent path would be to get it done. Uh, just before I go to Mr. Kretz again, um, just want to note there's a couple of folks who put in cards late. We already did the public comment on this earlier, so uh, I'm sorry, Barbara, but we did get your document, uh, which every member has. Um, um, so, Mr. Kretz, do you have additional questions? Uh, and, and comments. Uh, go for it. First of all, uh, thank I, you, Mr. Michelson. I, I just for the record, I disagree with the city attorney's interpretation. Um, I. Th I believe it's been since the city attorney uh, uh, gave us his advice um, that the state's legislative council has opined in a written opinion that there's in fact no limitation on the use of privately owned vehicles for advertising as long as it's compliant with vehicle code section 25,400 which authorizes private vehicles to have these advertisements. Um, also, uh, LA Municipal Code uh, 87.54, which the city attorney refers to, uh, titled Operation of Unusual Types of Vehicles Causing Traffic Problems, is not a taxi regulation. It's a parking regulation for parked billboards that we all remember uh, uh, the effort to deal with. Um, it is not for uh, vehicles that stop only for a moment when they pick up or... Uh, or disengorge passengers. Also, earlier this decade, we had similar devices on uh, LA checkered cabs without providing this legal advice that it couldn't be done. They were approved by the Department of Transportation. So uh, I don't see any overwhelming case for these not being legal. I don't even see a case. Um, but I think I think we we should regulate them um, and. I'm not 100% opposed to including some Uber and Lyft vehicles also. I'm just opposed to letting Uber and Lyft vehicles run wild with this technology and taxis, which are the ones that are clinging to life after we have regulated them and let Uber and Lyft run wild in multiple arenas, most recently uh, providing close to a death knell at the airport by eliminating the only area where taxis are competitive due to their convenience by making them equally inconvenient. So now if we do something to allow them the tiniest bit of income 
and possibly uh, allow taxi drivers to continue to remain in existence. Uh, I think that's a reasonable goal. Okay. Um, that certainly complicates your work going forward, Mr. City Attorney. Um, so just a couple things. Um, uh, I mean, for everybody who's here, this is clearly going to pass two to one. Uh, and the, the following is not meant as a criticism of my colleagues who support this. I, I, I get it. I just want the folks who are here who are opposed to this to know I am with you. I, I just think this is going to be a, 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 a danger and a hazard uh, on the streets. And I just think, sure, as we're sitting here, the moment we allow these on Uber and taxis, there is going to be some lawsuit. And within six months, every driver in Los Angeles is going to be allowed to do this. And I think that's going to wind up not helping anybody, including the ones we're intending to help. So my, my last question is a parenthetical one, uh, but it's somewhat related. Uh, yesterday in council, we approved the extension of the taxi franchise to give your department the opportunity to actually do something uh, significant to really help out the taxi industry. How is that moving on track with this? Where will we see your report back on this and the next step on that? So my goal was, um, particularly with everything going on out at LAX, um, to get past holiday travel before we take up sort of the complex issue of, uh, and, and we're doing a lot more work yeah. actually with many of the companies themselves, the drivers, to refine the recommendations we had per your direction and their interest. And so my goal, my interest is to bring something back to you to begin that discussion because I expect we will be back, it'll probably take a few uh, conversations before yeah. we get it to a place where you feel confident sending it to full council for a vote in January. Um, so that we have it done within plenty of time before we the franchises expire and those companies can make business decisions based on new regulation. Um, I think that it would be reasonable for us to bring back something on this item um, maybe in that same time frame, January, February. Um, and again, you know, there's a, there's a fireflies on taxis pilot and then there's a, you know, something else for you to consider which would be how are we going to regulate mobile digital advertising on top of vehicles in the city of Los Angeles pilot, which is about permitting those companies that want to do that function in this city. And so it may end up that they don't actually have to move ahead and one can go faster than the other, et cetera, et cetera. So I think they can kind of come together depending on what you, de what you decide. Um, they may be completely wrapped up together or they may end up on, you know, sort of independent tracks. Oh God, you just made me wonder about the future of digital advertising on drones in the city of Los Angeles. What do you think keeps me up at night, council member? <laughs> it's not the scooters? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I got them handled. Digital advertising on those yeah, are coming yeah. soon, too. Yeah, right. Digital advertising on scooters. Yeah. Then you'll be in a bind. <laughs> <laughs> no bind whatsoever. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so uh, we're uh, going to amend the ask to, to add the leader's uh, recommendation. Report back, on report, back. I report back on a pilot program for your consideration with some alternatives in it based on the guidance and input that we got. Okay. That will reflect, you know, legal considerations as well. Okay. Ms. Martinez is a yes? Yes, yes. Mr. Kretz is a yes? Uh, I don't know. I've got to think about this. Yeah, I'm a yes. <laughs> and, and you can record me as a no on that. Uh, okay, so we are done with item number 15. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, next, we are going to go to item number 10. Item number 10 is a Rook Recorian motion relative to DOT's data protection principles governing the department's use and retention of mobile data specification data. All right. We have uh, one public comment on this. Uh, Mohammed uh, Tajsar. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mohammed Tajsar. I'm an attorney at the uh, ACLU of Southern California. Um, sorry, is there some confusion? Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. 
Um, I'm speaking here uh, this afternoon in support of this motion, and I just wanted to make a couple quick points about MDS. Um, we've been following the development of MDS um, for a little while now and had engaged with the department earlier in the summer about the program. We, in general, support this motion. We think it's important. Um, and uh, we also broadly support the department's regulatory interests um, in creating this program, although we have some concerns about the specifics here, and we're prepared um, hopefully pretty soon to put those concerns to writing and submit them to the committee and to the department in general. And those concerns uh, are about location data and privacy. But in the meantime, we support this motion. We think it's important to articulate, ex to have the department articulate exactly what the use cases for the data collection schemes that it's proposing to MDS are. And we also think it's important that it creates specific policies and procedures based upon these principles for the collection and dissemination of this data. So we support it. Thank you so much. Colleagues, do we want to hear from? Oh, hold on a second. Uh, no, you're good. Oh, I'm good. Okay, you're right. Good. Sorry. Um, there are a couple items that we did not act on earlier, and so public comment is still open on those. Uh, general public comment, however, is closed. So, um, uh, Mr. Spindler, Ms. Ramirez, and Mr. Schmidt, uh, you can each comment on this item. Multiple items. Yep. Uh, we're not going to do multiple right now because. It's too confusing. You got one minute each on this. Right. Item number 10. Thank you very you much. You go first. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Spindler, go for it. Please. Anybody got takers? All right, I'll go first. Okay, hold on, wait, hold on. You also filled out for 13 and 14, so yeah. uh, all right, you each have, you can each do two minutes for items uh, 10, 13, and 14. All right. Uh, but it's only two minutes because you don't get general public comment because we already did that. It's fine. I thank you. I appreciate you opening up. Um, okay, so number 10 in regards to the data protection principles. Um, just basically mobility data. I know we were talking about um, tech companies kind of uh, redirecting traffic in other meetings, and I think that uh, I, I agree that we should be um, protecting our data um, because that's, uh, I don't know, that seems like they're kind of overstepping the bounds of our jurisdiction. So um, I agree with that one. Um, I think that we should be having, you know, we should be investing in mobility for people who have uh, difficulty access, uh, you know, problems getting on the bus. Because I, I can tell you from personal experience, you know, the bus drivers drive crazy. And with my back, I mean, I'm just telling you, I, my leg, I got the Franken leg going after some of those bus drivers, especially on the expo. You know, I really like the train, but man, they sometimes destroy me. Um, let's see, number 14, uh, private entities. So electric. Electric vehicle charging stations, I really like this idea, actually, because we need to be doing more of this. I know that a lot of the developments we do um, don't want to do more than what's required, and I think that if we want to get out of uh, the climate crisis, we're going to have to eventually, I think that everybody should have um, their daily driver be an electric vehicle, and if that's the case, then we're going to need charging stations all over the place, because it's like, you know, I... Uh, I don't know how you recharge a battery once it's dead out in the road. You know what I mean? It's not like you can go get gas and just walk and get, you can carry a battery back or something. You know what I mean? So I think that uh, to add these all over the place is a great idea. Um, and to conclude, I just, uh, Manchester has a giant digital sign. It's huge. And I, I think that these on top of cars is, is going to be a disaster. So... Ms. Ramirez, you have two minutes for items 10, 13, and 14. Thank you very much. Um, number 10, the data protection principles governing the department's use of retention mobility data specification. Boy, that's a hard one to swallow. Mobility is a wonderful thing. However, mobility with traffic gridlocks, they're diametrically opposed. If you live in the downtown area like I do, homeless, boy, what a, what a world. You see it all, especially when you have events or protests. You have massive gridlocks. The buses do not get schedules until the last minute of that morning where they are told you're on detour. Pick up wherever you can. 
there is no order. It's utter chaos and disorder. And so, again, let me congratulate all of you because uh, the DOT buses are now working after hours and weekends. I thank you all for that. That took a lot of work on your part. Um, they, can't do, they can't function as well as the UCLA marching band. Those are, that was, I loved it, loved it. But anyway, having said that, um, please, we've got to do something about the, the traffic gridlock with mobility. It doesn't work. That's why it's going to get worse with overpopulation. And so, um, number 13, you're, I'm not sure when you say project delivery, what is that, food delivery? I hear that the food is being tampered by the deliverers. Let's work on something to safeguard the food being delivered to whomever it is being delivered. We need safe and secure food that is not being tampered or tainted. And number 14, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, Put these electric vehicle charging stations at the LAPD, the Sheriff's Department, and CHP, because as we all know, LA is a jungle. It is drug and gang infested, unsafe, uh, a stink bomb, and uninhabitable. We need to protect all drivers and their vehicles. I want safety for all legitimate vehicle owners. So let's put these stations at the LAPD, stations, the sheriff stations, uh, in the CHP controlled area so we have safety for all residents and drivers. God bless America and Donald Trump. Thank you. Spindler Herman Hunt. Yeah. And don't forget Greenspan. <laughs> so we get to number 10. I, I'm, I'm here on behalf of my pending nonprofit 501c4 transportation niggas. So we're trying to expand the LA DOT program. Now, I have a problem with the use and retention of number 10 of my mobility. Now, when I take LA DOT, I go down south past the 10 freeway to pick up the dope that I need to buy and resell in the rich white urban areas. Now, I, if you're keeping and retaining my GPS coordinates, that could be used by the district attorney and the city attorney. So I ask you to start exempting and giving the right to opt out so we can keep it secret. Also, I got some bitches I'm running lately for Mr. Marquise Harris Dawson and Mr. Mark Ridley Monkey over there in the second district. He got a lot of hoes. So we move around a lot. You see, when they raid, we got to move our hoes over from one side to the other side. And currently, we want to put a couple of prostitute bitches over there in West Hollywood in Mr. Koretz's condo. So we're going to talk about that later. Now, number 13, I say health and safety and sustainability, yes. Now, number 14. Now, we got niggas driving electric cars, yes. And we need private entities to recharge us for free. I do not want to pay any more. I want to plug in and drive, and I like it, and me and other pimps and dealers like it because you see those electric cars are real quiet, and we can get them to turn off and sneak up and down the alleys. It improves my sales by 40%, and now I'm doing Uber Eats too with dope. Thank done. you so That's much. You. God bless. You are done. Uh, for those in the audience who may be new to City Hall or to committee deliberations, um, please uh, do not uh, uh, misinterpret our legal obligation to allow that kind of speech to be um, interpreted as uh, agreement or endorsement or anything but uh, contempt for the comments that were made. Um, we are required to allow them to speak unless they do something that is actually disruptive. Um, so, Time, 2.05. The instigator, LA DOT's report on mobility investment program to incite a project delivery, but the city's policy goals for transit safety has become an issue of instigation and inciting public riot. Oh, the axis of this equity mayhem all started on Friday. But when we go back to the um, electric vehicle, you know, I, I can't drive, according to my doctors. It's safer for me to use uh, public transportation. You know, I use 
planes, trains, fuck the scooter, that's dangerous. Bike, fuck that, I don't want to get killed. We're the hit and run capital of the world. Every day some dumb asshole's running some jackass off the street on the road. Dumb niggers don't know how to drive in LA. But as far as charging stations on a public right of way, that's offensive. ADA Title II discrimination, ADA Title III discrimination, and 18 U.S.C. 245. Why can't the facility and the services be in a place that's safety programmatic? Or do I got that backwards? The safety of your constituents is programmatic because the city is so fucked. And I, a little brown nigga from LA, wants to know how to use a public right of way in the safest manner possible with my service animal. Otherwise, you're jeopardizing my life and my child's life according to the electric vehicle installation of public right of way charging stations. Fuck you. Mr. Hunt. The, the, the speak now or forever hold your peace. Okay, Mr. Hunt is foregoing his opportunity to comment for the remainder of the meeting. Uh, Mr. Greenspan here? Of course I'm here. I make Greenspan. After all, I wouldn't miss him for anything, except except maybe to watch the Gators kick some broom butt in the hardwood. But other than that, no, it's I'm here. Now, item 13. Um, after all, I'm wondering exactly what we're talking about as far as safety and things like that. We're more interested when it comes to Metro of well, who gets the contract? Well, we had the county Mounties. Now we've got the LAPD. So obviously, that's a very lucrative end with our money, of course. That's never forget that. But let me go to number 14, because I have my doubts on some of these things. After all, for the public right of way, OK, let's, let's do it maybe at parks and police stations, things like that, and metro stations. But of course, who's? the private entity that will be doing this. I mean, do I need to just go to the Ethics Commission and look up the campaign reports and see who's contributed? And those will be the people in the pool. Are they going to be sole source, no bid contracts given to some good old boy that you maybe went to high school with? I mean, is it up for a public bid and we'll all see who's getting this? I know it's a pilot program and there's lots of loopholes we could put in this, which to the, the main purpose would be to exclude others and not to include people. You know, very cliquish, country clubbish type of atmosphere. So I just wanted to be open, transparent, which that seems to be a word that's not in the vocabulary at City Hall, so we can all see who's getting this and what, how it's going to be done. I mean, I'm, I just have to be shown things because I don't just Take it at face value. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes uh, public comment. Uh, any questions to the general manager? Do we have a motion to approve? Item 10. I'm ten yeah, item 10. So moved. Moved and seconded. No objection. Uh, item 10 is approved. That brings us to item number 13. Item 13 is the DOT report relative to the Mobility Investment Program project delivering inventory of mobility enhancements and achieving the city's policy goals for transit safety, health, equity, access, and sustainability. It's like the old days back in Westchester. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good afternoon, Jay Kim, Assistant General Manager over Mobility Management at DOT. Um, the Mobility Investment Program is a map-based uh, project screening and project scoring platform uh, that's designed to help 
us be more proactive and competitive when we go after transportation grants. Uh, we have Mr. Thomas Carranza. He will give you a quick overview. I think, did you guys have some handouts? Sir? Handouts? Uh, we'll hand them out later. Okay. And there's also some handouts uh, for your okay. perusal, uh, and we'll be happy to answer any questions. Good afternoon. I'm Tom Carranza with LADOT. It's a pleasure to be here to introduce the LADOT Mobility Investment Program, or the MIP as we call it. The MIP represents our efforts to improve our advanced planning processes and to plan the department's mobility investments that best align with the goals of the mobility plan and with the, our department's core values. Over the last several months, we created a project database that unified the various work programs and projects led and supported by different teams within LADOT. The database provides an inventory of more than 1,300 projects in different phases of implementation, including projects with and without funding. The projects can be scored by program category, by council district, by project implementation phase, by proximity to an Olympics 2028 venue, or in a number of different ways. Having a unified inventory better organizes and positions us when pursuing grant funding opportunities, and by having a pre-screen inventory improvements that help advance our department's core values around safety, equity, health, access, and sustainability. Uh, in addition to the project inventory, we partner with the Data Science Federation and with Cal State LA computer science students to build a project scoring platform using an automated and weighted scoring model. We use scoring criteria that can rank projects based on how they help advance the city's mobility goals and objectives. The map-based scoring platform incorporates available and existing data layers and metrics that identify economic, health, access, and safety indicators, all which speak to our core values. These, these indicators represent the criteria used to score projects in our platform. The weight of each scoring dial can be adjusted to better match a particular funding program's eligibility criteria. So if, if there is a grant funding program that emphasizes safety, then we can increase the weight of the safety dial and prepare a ranked list of projects that, from the inventory that score high on safety. Uh, similarly, there's a grant funding that emphasizes first and last mile enhancements. We can adjust the weight of the accessibility scoring criteria. Uh, this flexibility allows us to be strategic with how we seek grant funding. Um, as grant funding opportunities are announced, we have a project inventory that can be sorted by project readiness and then ranked to align with both the program, the grant program objectives and with the city's transportation policies. The MIP allows us to, be, to make informed and policy-driven investment decisions. Uh, we expect the MIP to be an ongoing work program, but we have set up the foundational features that, can, that we can build on. We hope to move forward by developing a LADOT capital improvement plan, working with other departments to establish a better structure for how we work together to plan and deliver projects, uh, to develop new tools for how projects are conceptualized, and to provide the resources we need to maintain the program. Um, we have uh, a, f a MIP fact sheet that provides additional information and some screenshots of the um, project scoring platform. Thank you. So we're happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Um, so the, the, the subject matter could not possibly be more dry, um, but also <laughs> could not be, but could not be, but actually could not be more crucial. And that's not a matter of your delivery. That's a matter of the subject matter. Um, it, but it actually is vitally important because for, for a city that has so many needs, and this is not a DOT thing, this is a city overall thing that has so many needs, we really have a real huge problem with strategic planning for, for projects in particular. Uh, and, and it creates all sorts of chaos because you know, advocates have, have no idea how to, how to push a project uh, or when to push a project. Uh, the general public doesn't really know what's on the horizon in their neighborhood, so when we do something, it seems like it's come out of nowhere. Um, for you guys in the departments, it's like a mad <laughs> scramble when, when grants come up because things haven't been pre-prioritized and stuff. And then it leaves the, the council offices in, in, in the middle of sort of a, a sea of a confusion trying to pull everything together or figuring out um, what's what. So this is a, a, a definite um, uh, a step in the right direction uh, and a very big one. Uh, I'd like to see us go even further and, and come up with five and 20 year capital improvement programs uh, to help us match needs with anticipated funding opportunities uh, and so we can do even more advanced planning. So I'd like to keep the momentum going on this. Uh, I'd like to ask, in, in addition to receiving and filing this, I'd also ask us to uh, report back in 120 days with 
an update on development of a capital improvement plan for transportation projects, a project initiation project for strategic mobility projects, and the resources needed to support the above activities. Any questions? Mm -mm. No questions. Okay. So without no objection, that's the direction. Thank you. Of the committee. Thank you much. And that brings us to item number 14. Item 14 is the DOT report relative to the status of a pilot program to allow private entities to install electric vehicle charging stations in the public right-of-way. Good afternoon, council members. I'm Mariana Valdivia. I'm LADOT staff with the new mobility team. I'm here to provide an update on uh, the council direction to explore the feasibility of installing private electric car chargers in the public right-of-way. Along with our colleagues in the Departments of Water and Power and the Bureaus of Engineering and Street Services, we're exploring how to uh, get our heads wrapped around the implementation process in the city and how to make this a reality. Um, and the intent is to ensure that we're fulfilling our sustainability goals and that all electric car drivers in the city have access to this critical infrastructure. Um, to date, we have been convening with the vehicle, electric vehicle task force under the leadership of the mayor's staff. Um, we will be convening again uh, this month, and it's an opportunity for us to um, dig in on our respective department's procedures and requirements, and also consider what our respective resources require. Um, additionally, it's the opportunity for the mayor's staff to give us an update on the appetite on the private side um, and what challenges they're considering before they make that investment in our city. Um, I'm also very happy to report that since the writing of our staff report, we have had the opportunity to fill uh, one of our previously vacant uh, staff positions. We just onboarded an engineer who ha will dedicate time to our electrification um, projects. Um, I'm happy to report back um, on the progress, um, the, our, our continued progress at a later date. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, glad to hear you've got some staffing. Uh, that should help. I know that this has not uh, moved as fast as DOT would like. It's not moved as fast as the, the council would like. It's definitely not moved as fast as the public would like. Uh, I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's a hunger out there for sure. The, the, the task force you mentioned, that's you guys, DWP, Mayor's Office, BOE, BSS, anybody else? BSL. And BSL, right, obviously. Uh, and uh, how often has the task force met? Or has it really just, it just been struggling to get off the ground? Um, it, just due to availability of staff um, and just summer months and timing, it's yep. been a couple months, but um, we find ourselves getting back into a routine. Okay, and now that we've got staffing, we can sort of reignite. Yes. I guess. Okay. When, when we talk about this, are we talking about uh, curbside or in lots or both? In the public right away, um, along the sidewalk, if you will. Um, currently, um, the investment of the infrastructure is only on private, so we're exploring to make it visible and accessible to a wider um, audience. Yeah, I'm wondering, are we, are we thinking mainly about DOT lots or, or, or government property, or are we thinking about, you know, where a parking meter currently is or something like that? I think the stickiest issues are enabling installation in at curbside. Yeah. So on our lots, whether they're DOT lots or private lots, that has its own separate sort of uh, pathway, and it's, it's, it's much more clear and much, there's not as much jurisdictional overlap. Um, and there's clear, you know, if it's a DOT lot, it's clearly a DOT lead, and we've been steadily increasing the chargers that are in DOT lots, but it's that curbside real estate where the overlapping jurisdiction combined with a lack of clarity around the lead department has created sort of a slower program. Yeah, and the, the curbside's always going to be challenging because most electric vehicles, the charging is not on the side that, that is closest to the curb, um, so that yep. makes it harder. Uh, not impossible, Kinda. but... Kind of. It's hard. <laughs> Depends on the car, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. exactly. Yeah, uh, because those those spots have special parking privileges. Sometimes there's a temptation for driver with an EV to park behind a currently parked charging car, take the charger out of that car, put it in their car, et 
et cetera. So it also creates sort of a, um, it, it just has its own set of issues that is more challenging than in lots. Okay. So when, when you come back, and we'll do like another 60 days, uh, we've got the holidays and you've now got staffing, so we'll restart the clock on that. Uh, it, would be, it would be great if when you come back you could uh, tell us, and I know you want to be collegial so you'll be delicate, exactly what you need from each agency. I know it's hard for you guys to corral, it's going to have to be the mayor's office and us that, that helps corral all the agencies, but give us a sense of what actually we need from each agency because otherwise you'll come back and you'll have all the good intentions in the world but you'll still have a lot of departments that just have so many of their own competing priorities that it just won't rise up to the level that we need. Hold you. Um, Mr. Kretz. So I, I think I've driven past uh, Blue LA uh, car share and electric vehicle charging on Beverly Boulevard. Is it only exclusively for car sharing, or can an electric vehicle charge there if there's an open space? The intent of that program under council's direction is that the, when there are not cars parked there, that they're available for public charging. Um, and that's sort of rolling out with the expansion of that public-private partnership. And do we charge for that charging at that location, or those locations? Charge the public? Yeah. No. So if you pull into a space at a blue LA space, you can charge your car without having to pay for that. Yes, and where we have replaced meters with chargers in the public right of way, we also don't charge for those. So there's a few pilot locations where the Bureau of Street Lighting and DOT have worked together to put in a, an EV charger, fast charger, uh, replacing a meter. And at those locations, that charging is, is free for people who want to use it. And it's reasonably noticeable, which is a good thing, although I suspect it's partly because the car share vehicles are also parked there and they stand out as well. I'm wondering if we've thought much about, just in general, whether our chargers on the street can be made as noticeable as, as possible so people spot them. I mean, I have at least without looking for them, but like I said, that's with the vehicles there to draw attention. The pilot locations where we've done that, they have signs and banners at the locations, mm -hmm. and they also have signs about the parking restrictions. But I agree with you, even though I know where they are, um, they don't always pop. And there could be some, as we expand the network of these things, some kind of open data portal where the locations are available, and so mapping applications can start integrating in them into um, their navigation systems to guide drivers in that way as well. That would be great. Thank you. Anything else? Mm -mm. Okay, so uh, we will receive Oh, a actually I do have one other mm -hmm. thought, which is just, I wonder if it would help rope uh, public works uh, infrastructure into this to uh, also refer it to public works. Just as a thought, a thought. Well, let's get the report back and then see how they're doing. Because otherwise it may take longer to get the report back to us. Okay. Uh, Okay. Um, okay, so we will receive this item. We'll see you back in 60 days. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you much. Uh, good. Okay. Um, Mr. Uh, Slomovic, I had done general comment at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, were you not here? Mr. Slomovic here? Okay. All right. Well, we had done the stuff at the beginning, so uh, that uh, concludes. There's nothing left on the agenda, so uh, with that, we are adjourned. Thank you.